ever since I've started this channel, I've wanted it not to just be about me. I wanted to figure out a way to encourage the collective to be lights and love, to spread it. And I've really been struggling with that. I've recorded several videos and just not posted them. Um, I'm insecure and I don't, I have a hard time using my voice to speak my truth. Um, I come from a very judgmental place and a, seems like a different lifetime ago, but I'm working through a lot of wounds and a lot of trauma and, you know, I'm dealing with it. I saw a medium yesterday and she told me that I am a natural channel. Don't know what that means, but I'm thinking that it's supposed to come quite naturally to me. So why not give it a try, right? Uh, she says that if I channel and speak from spirit, it's speaking my truth, right? And it's speaking a profound truth. And I thought, you know, that's beautiful. If I can give you encouragement, wisdom, light, and love from spirit, there's nothing more beautiful than that. There's nothing more, I don't know, there's no other truth than that, I guess. I got uh, a deck of cards a couple of weeks ago. I know this is going to be backwards to you, but it's called the Power Deck. Um, the Power Deck, the Cards of Wisdom. It's by Lynn V. Andrews, and the artwork is by Rob Schoten, some sort of German name. It uh, spoke to me when it was on the shelf. I mean, obviously, right? The, the trees on there. Yeah. So I bought it, and I have been pulling cards every day, and I'm finding they are so, so powerful. It's just what I need. It's a blend of shamanism and Buddhism. And the artwork is just incredibly earthy. Just to give you a little bit of a sampling here. So what I thought I would try is I will pull a card from the deck for the collective and then I will speak from spirit. Um, I just want to tell you a bit about my guides, I guess. Um, some of them don't want to be named, so I will not. I feel like this is very vulnerable and um, I'm making myself very vulnerable, which is good. It's, it's good to do this. So I have something called the Council. They are my spirit animals and, and for quite a few years now they have always been in the same formation and uh, for the most part they have been with me well, I've been adding on and adding on, right? Occasionally one leaves and then comes back or just leaves and doesn't come back. For the most part, they've been with me for quite a few years now. So to the back of me, there's Buck. I got two bison, one on each side of me. Um, I got an animal in front of me. So they're like, they're literally my, sort of like my hedge of protection. Um, they're all bigger animals. They make me feel very secure. Um, the bison sometimes literally put their heads against my shoulders and prop me up. Um, also in front of me, I have my higher self. Her name is Nayeli Alethea. 
Oh, I should have checked this up before I spoke on this, but uh, one of the names means love and one of the names means truth because that is what I am seeking in this lifetime, love and truth. Okay, so got an animal hanging around on my nose all the time. I've got a raccoon on my lap and then some very, oh, and then there's another one who doesn't want to be identified. He's always outside. Um, yeah, the ones who don't want to be identified are the ones who are most dearest to me. Yeah, I'm just so, so grateful. Okay, uh, so the latest additions are we have a mother cougar and her two cubs. And um, right now they are just flaked out. It's it, Depending on my um, emotional state, they'll either be like sitting kind of on high alert, sort of guarding or... Right now they're just flaked out and I have a cheetah and I don't know the cheetah all that well yet, but she's, she's here. Um, my warrior is sometimes to the right of me, sometimes also sitting in front of me. It gets a little bit, never, it's all interesting. Um, and then I often call into the circle, my dog Samuel and Hepzibah, so they're sitting, um, on either side of me and my warrior. Okay, so that's the council. Um, I have another circle called the aunts, and they are five women. I don't call them grandmothers because they're younger than grandmothers. They're a little bit older than me, but they're not like elders really. They're they're not quite my peers, but almost I guess. So my aunts. Um, there's five of them plus me, and when I call them, we literally sit in a circle, and it's like a sharing circle. We do a lot of drumming together. We do a lot of spreading love together. Um, we've had some very, very powerful experiences. Okay, so that's like my two core circles, and then on the outside of that, there are what I call my human ancestors. They're the helpful ones. Um, they most often show up as Native Americans, and they are often drumming, um, singing, dancing, and they are like in a circle around the council. And then surrounding the ancestors, I guess the ancestors and the standing tall ones sort of like all mixed together, um, are the standing tall ones, and they are the grandmothers. Well, I call them the standing tall ones and I call them the grandmothers and they are my ancestors for this particular um, timeline, this life. So I got lots and lots of powerful... Oh, my dog's thinking about hitting the cam. Oh, he missed it. Hey, Hepzibah. Hey, Hepzibah. How are you? Okay, go lay down. Sorry about that. Well, I'm not sorry. I shouldn't apologize for things I'm not sorry for. Um, I got lots and lots of um, potent guides and healers. Oh, we got another one coming to say hello. Hey, Sam, you gonna come join us? Okay. Lay down. I got lots of powerful allies on my side and if you want to claim the message that I have then they're on your side too. Uh, we hold space for many people. Sometimes it's the collective. I'm pretty new at this. Some of this language is very new to me so I'm just speaking what I know of, right? Um, I have recently started working with two guides who are like personal. So like the ancestors are just thousands of, they're in the human form, spirits, but they're just all anonymous as are um, most of the standing tall ones, right? There, I do have a couple of grandmother and grandfather trees, but I do have a couple of guides who are just starting to work with me. Uh, one does not want to be named, and the other one is Brad the Viking. He is 
very tall and very handsome. He has the most amazing energy and uh, I think that he will have a message for us tonight. So we'll see what happens. Uh, if I get too anxious, I imagine that I will close myself all up and nothing will, will be able to come through. But I, I've smudged, I, I drummed for a while, everyone was really excited, dancing, and just the energy was just amazing. I think that they are all very excited for me to take this next step on my journey and my healing journey. It is what they called me here to do. And yeah, okay, let's pick a card. Uh, when I pick a card, I hold them out to the grandmothers and I often see their roots coming up and intertwining in the cards and in my hands. So that it's it's their message to me. Um, often I'll see my warrior's hands like on top of mine and on the bottom of mine. Um, sometimes all the ancestors come and it's just oh I'm getting emotional. It's just I've had I'm having such powerful powerful experiences with with uh, with these healings. So I'm gonna hold out the cards and ask the grandmothers. For a message for the collective, and if it resonates with you, claim it, and if it doesn't, then just let it go. That, That's fine, you know. Okay. This is the card that uh, the Standing Tall Ones have chosen for you today. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. All right. Now, I have my glasses here. Where did they go? Oh, tuck them into my pocket. So I'm lay down. So the message is perfection. The direction is west. Dream your passion. Fly away. Go through the hoop of your innermost fears and desires. Meet them and conquer them. What pain from childhood have you not dealt with? Move into the wound of your most secret fears and find the seeds of wisdom that are planted there. Face what upsets you the most. It is a great teacher. Give away whatever is holding you back. Insecurities, ego, fear of failure, or of not being loved. 
fear of being alone, and be reborn into a new state of perfection. And be reborn into a new state of perfection. That is beautiful. That is perfection. If that resonates with you, claim it. If it doesn't, just let it go. All right, I'll see what happens. I'm going to ground myself and connect with Fred the Viking and see what he has for us today. And my nose is leaking. Man, I'm a human, hey? Okay, I'm going to go get myself some tissue and I will be right back. I'm glad to see that Sam kept you company. He is such a cute dog and he totally knows it. Hey Sam. Hey Sam. All right. Let go of striving. It's, it's exhausting. It brings on nothing but weariness, pain, and hurt. Let go of striving. Well, that was short and sweet. It's something that I struggle with all the time because I, I hold on to things so, so tightly. And it's like I don't even know how to let go. I have a stranglehold on so many things. And um, I guess the word perfection has a negative connotation for me, you know? So. We strive for perfection, right? But that's not the perfection that uh, they're talking about. You know, we let go of striving. We face our fears or insecurities. We face our ego. And we'll be reborn into a new state of perfection. One where we, we will be much more prepared to deal with life as a human, with other humans. It's a good reminder. Okay, once again, if that resonates with you, take it into your heart and let it percolate there for a while. If it doesn't, just let it go. I'll uh, keep trying to do this, and I promise it's not going to be 20 minutes long. It's not going to be the whole explanation. I'll pull a card, and I'll see what message I have, and that'll be my love to you. Thanks for listening. And remember that you are loved. We are loved. We are worthy. And we are enough.